Hey YouTube, I got a different kind of video here. So just to kind of uh, talk about this so-called vapor gate or uh, defective vapor chamber issue 110C thermal throttle issue that has been circulating around the internet uh, in the last couple of weeks here regarding AMD's 7900XTX reference card. So I kind of wanted to make this video to sort of clarify a lot of things. I've noticed there's a lot of confusion uh, with some owners of this card not knowing if they're affected or how to tell if they're affected uh, and also like what does it mean if you bought one of these from Newegg as opposed to Micro Center as opposed to AMD.com and you got one with like a Sapphire box or a Power Color box or something does that mean that you're immune to this problem so just to answer that question no you're not immune to the problem um, if your graphics card the easiest thing I can tell you is if your graphics card looks like this if it's a reference made by AMD card, doesn't matter what the packaging looks like, regardless of whether it's a Sapphire box or a Power Color box or an XFX box, Asus, Gigabyte, etc., or, or the AMD box off of AMD.com, uh, it could be affected by the vapor chamber problem. The only way to be absolutely immune to the problem is to not have a reference card, meaning you have to have something like the Sapphire Nitro or the Power Color Red Devil or the XFX Merc, all of those cards, the ASUS Tough, all those cards use a completely different cooling solution, so they are completely immune to this problem because they don't, don't use the vapor chamber uh, design that is featured on this card. So it's only reference cards. Um, the other thing, how to tell if you're affected. So if you're playing a game with FPS uncapped um, and you want to have this in the horizontal configuration, meaning you want to have it installed in the PC the most standard way where it's like this not vertical which would be like this plugged down into the uh, PCIe slot it has to be in the horizontal config to see the problem um, that's number two and then the other thing you want to look for is while you're testing the card or while you're just playing games or whatever uh, you want to check either through GPU Z which is a free monitoring tool that you can get from techpowerup.com um, or through AMD's Radeon Adrenaline software, like the actual Radeon control panel. So from that, they allow you to, to monitor the temperature. So it'll, it'll display both the GPU temperature, which is the edge temperature. Uh, and so we're talking about edge temperature. So like imagine if this is the GPU die, the GPU temperature is red somewhere out here along the outer rim of the die. And the hotspot temperature is the one you want to look out for. The hotspot is red near the middle of the die. So um, if you're seeing in Celsius, if you're seeing a difference of 40 degrees Celsius or greater between the hotspot and the GPU temperature, which is the edge temperature, then you're probably affected. You also want to check to see if the fans are running um, in the stock fan profile, if they are running to, you know, like almost 3000 RPMs, uh, and it's at 110 C on the hotspot, that's a really good indication that it's affected by the defective vapor chamber. Because essentially what's happening is, if you think of this as a vapor chamber, it's essentially a heat pipe that's kind of flattened out. Imagine if someone took a, a cylinder heat pipe and they just kind of like rolled over it and flattened it out. So what's happening is there's not enough fluid in here, so when the GPU heats up, all the water vapor in the, the chamber essentially turns into a gas, it turns into vapor, it vaporizes essentially. And then because there's not enough, you don't have any recirculation where the, the water in its gas form or the, the H2O in its gas form can't condense back into a liquid and then just continue that cycle. So with more fluid, you would have water turning into gas and then turning back into liquid then turning back into gas, back into liquid over time, it would just circulate like that within the vapor chamber and that's how it's supposed to work. So if you are affected by that, you need to contact whoever you purchased it from. So if you bought it from Newegg, you wanna open a case with Newegg. Um, and if you bought it off of AMD.com, open a case with AMD. So it'll probably go, with, the RNA will probably be handled through Digital River. Um, but uh, I would, I would get, start with the retailer. If you are affected, start with whoever you purchase it from. Unless you're outside the 30-day window, which I think at this point in time, no one should be outside of that window. Um, I've heard you can contact AMD, but I don't, I don't think you should because if everybody just goes to AMD, you know, that's going to become a choke point in the supply of trying to send out the RMA units. 
So I think it's, it's best to contact whoever you purchased this from initially and then just get instructions from them on, on how to get an RMA. We're going to see how to determine if your AMD reference card 7900XTX is affected by the vapor chamber issue. And we're going to see what this does. So we want to monitor the temperature here. And I have this in a horizontal configuration. You guys saw the install video. I always only ever install my graphics cards with them in the horizontal configuration. We want to see if the difference between the GPU temperature, which is also known as the edge temperature, and the junction temperature, which is the hotspot temperature, this is in the middle of the die, a delta of 40 degrees Celsius, is where the junction temperature is at 110, the fan speed is like almost 3000 RPMs, and the GPU temperature is around like 70 or so, because 70 here and 110 there, that's a 40 degree delta, that's indicative of the issue. So, so far, you know, we're running graphics test 2, you guys can see it there. And it seems to be doing okay, but we're going to have to do a little bit more extensive testing because it can take several minutes uh, for it to manifest here. Okay, now we're going to test Horizon Zero Dawn's benchmark and see if we can get it to show up in this game, which is much more graphically demanding than Final Fantasy XIV was. So, and this is also kind of a long benchmark too. So we'll be able to see here if we can get the problem to show up. Um, but what I will say is, I will mention that this card was from Newegg, so you can see it's a Sapphire box, but it is still a made by AMD card, uh, for the reasons I showed earlier. Um, but, um, it's, so for those wondering, so if you're on the fence, of, you want one of these and you don't really want to have to try to uh, hunt down the very hard to find uh, AIB custom cooler cards, so what I will say is this one, this one was uh, purchased from Newegg on January 4th. So that seems to be after they have recalled the faulty cards to the warehouse. So I guess if you're watching this video after that time or several days after this video has gone live, uh, you're probably going to be okay, but we'll see. I, I could be wrong. I would assume that all the retail channels, the warehouses, have already pulled the faulty ones from the uh, shelves. And I think at this point, anyone buying one of these going forward is probably going to be okay. Because it looks like um, this was definitely a massive gamble to see if these the faulty vapor chambers are still out in the wild. Um, but it seems like, or out in the retail channels, um, but it seems like they've been recalled internally um, on the supply chain side. So, that being the case, I think it's okay. This is still a really good graphics card. You know, it's... Uh, the 4090 is 20% faster for 60% more money. So, this one's still excellent value for what you get. Uh, in terms of, even though it's, you know, $1,000, considering where we were a year and a half ago... Um, it seems like it's decent value. We'll put it that way. I won't say it's great value, um, but it's decent value. All right, so hope you guys found this video useful, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.